Okay, part two. So I've tidied the uh, original uh, cells up here. I have taken them all, I've put them into, I've, I've actually defined a, a method to do it all in one simple go. So you basically write this def and your method name. I'm going to chuck my path variable into there and uh, colon always to finish your method statement. And the other important thing here is the return statement. So I'm returning two variables. I'm returning header and I'm returning the data, the transposed data. So when I need to, to use this method, I simply, I can define it again as header, comma, data equals get data. And my original path was data path. There you go. So if I type header now, it should give me the header. And if I type data, it gives me that data array again. Right, fantastic. We are ready to plot. So this is really easy to do with Python. I am going to show you the quick way, and I'm going to show you the slightly longer but worth it way to plot the data. Uh, let's just define an x, y, and z coordinates. So I've got data already. The first element in that data list is all of my x coordinates, so that'll define x, same for y and z, with x, y, and z being the zinc to cadmium ratio, the band gap, and the thickness, respectively. Um, there you go. So I could just do um, okay, before I do that, I need to import my matplotlib here. And I'm going to do it this way first, because if you were writing a script, you'd do it this way. But then I'm going to show you the easy way when you're working with a Jupyter Notebook as well. Actually, I'll just put this under here. Uh, then I could do plot, scatter, x, y. And I'm just going to do c equals z. I'll explain this in a second. And if I do that, oh, I also have to write plot.show. Uh, OK. Oh, I forgot on the brackets. There you go. Uh, it's come out and it is, um, it looks good. So it's used the X axis for the composition. The Y is the band gap. And it's also giving me the third axis, which it's sort of transposed onto a, a color um, spectrum. Okay, so um, I don't know which color corresponds to thick or thin. We'll, we'll talk about color bars in a second. Firstly, I want to rejig this so it actually runs in my Jupyter Notebook. So if you're writing a script, yes, do it this way. Jupyter Notebook is good because it has this PyLab environment. And if I my inline as well, it'll put that figure in the cell. Um, when I use the PyLab environment, I don't need to import matplotlib. It does it for me. I don't need to use anything like this. In fact, I don't, whoops, I don't even need to use the show command. It'll do it. So if I run that now, um, there you go. There it is. I'll run it again to get rid of my warning. There you go, it's there, and it's in the cell, um, nice and contained. Right, so um, let's do some other cool stuff with this. Well, this is the easy way, uh, but I can't really do a lot with that now I've got it. I'm actually going to define it as a figure. So if I do fig equals figure, that essentially creates a canvas for us to work on, and I can change the figure size then, so I can make it a bit bigger. Uh, let's call it, I always do 10. Uh, 12 by 7, so I'll go, and then I'm going to create the uh, the axis, fig, add, add subplot, okay, I'm not going to discuss what this means, we will talk about it in the meeting, uh, or later, then I'm going to run axe.plot.scatter, uh, x, y, z, equals z. Done it wrong. What did I do wrong this time? X has no one. Right, let me just pause that and figure out what I've got to do. Okay, figured that one out. I'm being an idiot. I don't need this plot command, it's just simply scatter. Dot scatter even. Here we go. There you go. So I made it a bit bigger. 
So I can actually change the point size if I want. I can uh, say, let's say, uh, S equals 50. There you go. And now I need to define some axis labels. I might want to increase the tick label size. And I definitely want a color bar in here to tell me what color corresponds to what thickness. So let's do that. The reason why I've used this figure um, object here, you'll see if you're doing this on a regular basis, it just makes it that much easier to manipulate um, your plots um, when they're objects and you don't just write plot scatter. Okay, And then you can also add other lines and uh, data points to your figure afterwards as well. Okay, I'm just going to have a glass of water if that's okay. Okay, let's do a color bar. L okay, to do that I need to define my plot as um, a variable itself. Let's call it L1. Okay, don't worry too much about this. It'll make sense. What have I done? Right. And color bar, let's call it CB equals color. Oh, American spelling of color. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Can't do anything about that. And let's say L1. And if I run that, we'll have a look. There you go. It's got a color bar. Uh, so obviously the blue is the thin and the red is the thick parts of the film. I need a title. So if I do, uh, I can't remember what it is. CB uh, dot label. I think it'll just be. Um, Right, let me remember how to do this. Set label. Come on, Rob, get a grip. Here we go. There you go. So I've got that word in there. Now, remember those that header variable we defined earlier? So let's use the headers we've extracted from our own data file as labels for our color bar. So we can just do that like this. Uh, curly bracket, zero. Oh, apostrophe, curly bracket, oh, zero. Uh, dot format is the Python 3 way of doing things. Then we are going to use header, and it was the first element in that header. And I close those brackets and do that. There you go. I'm down here. Okay. Let's change the size of the header. I could do that just by writing. Where's that? There we go. Size equals 20. There you go, nice big there. Right, axis labels. Easy peasy. Ax dot set um, x label. I can do the whole thing again. Zero. Uh, this time I'm going to use. Uh, oh, I just realized something. That's uh, zero. I was correct there. But that is actually the third element in our list. So if I do that, there you go. That's film thickness, uh, and that's composition. I will do the same for the y-axis. Y, and of course that's number one. There you go, looking good. Right, what about these tick labels? These are kind of small. Let's have a go. Uh, I think it's X uh, tick param. Um, label size, so I guess. Uh, let's try 20. There you go. Um, and I think for the color bar, I think I have to write label size here too. Uh, maybe it's just size. No. Okay, I'll have to figure that out one on, that one out another day. Okay, so. We plotted the data, wonderful. I'm gonna stop there. The next thing we're gonna do, uh, which is actually pretty straightforward, is we're gonna plot a, um, a line of best fit to this, okay.